Thanks for staying with us. It's time now to go to the press and see what the papers are. Uh, we're just going to reel out these uh, headlines uh, for your consumption and hope that you're going to get a paper for yourself or you're going to uh, look uh, these stories up and see what is happening. We're beginning with uh, the Daily Independent newspaper. The Daily Independent leads with Fubara orders probe of local governments, Suez in caretaker chairman. Uh, the writers are says River won't set president on local government tenure extension. PDP warns ex Rivers local government chairman against disrupting peace. IGP orders heightened security measures to state warns killers of vigilante police officer arrested. That is a uh, Rivers local government tenure crisis. Uh, that is what is being said there on Daily Independence. We also have other smaller headlines, but if you want to read up on that story, you go to page 29 of the Daily Independent. Edo PDP expels Dan Obi, Philip Shaibu, Ogwede Ehama. Uh, the said anti-party activities has made them to um, have made them to uh, expel these people. On page seven, you'll find that story. We also have uh, federal government can't tax airlines to fund aviation agency, Aero CEO. I remember what uh, has been happening in the aviation industry, how everybody's been asked to come show papers, show this and that, and then the levies that have been imposed on airline operators. And this is what the Aero uh, chief executive officer is saying. Federal government can't tax airlines to fund aviation agency. Uh, we also have a story close to that. Again, aviation unions call for constitution of sectors board. You can find that on page 6 of the Daily Independence. On the same page 6, Eto shuts down production at OML 29 in Bayelsa over oil leak. Then, Kanu, Namdi Kanu considers out-of-court settlement with federal government condemns killing of soldiers in Abia state. There was this report that uh, the uh, leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, has been thinking about an out-of-court settlement. And he came out to say uh, that he does not support the kind of killings going on in the southeast, that he and his people were fighting for peace. And how can someone be fighting for peace and still killing uh, people of the same ethnicity even, and not just killing people, but killing their own brothers and sisters, and that that is unheard of, and he condemns it totally. Well, we are hoping we are making a headway, and there will be uh, calm in that regard, and there will be settlement of some sort um, in the coming days. Kanu Emirates ship tussle is another story, and NNPP accuses federal government of plotting violence and state of emergency. We're going to talk more about this on a hot topic. We are hope, hoping to be joined by a chieftain of the NNPC, a national chieftain of the NNPC. And if he's able to join us, he will tell us what is happening and uh, why they're making this uh, accusation on the federal government. Uh, that will be that for the Daily Independent uh, newspaper. You can also uh, go to the Vanguard newspaper, which is our next stop. Uh, some of these newspapers have almost the same um, headlines. On Vanguard, minimum wage, why governors' orders are food dragging. You might want to read up on that story uh, on Vanguard newspaper. The writers are saying, may retrench workers need bailouts to pay. Idris detaches itself from unwilling governors, at which labor, federal government stand. Uh, no agreement but alignment of interest. That is according to OPS, Organized Private Sector, pushes for new acts to cover employees with minimum of 200 workers. Senator Wadada begs Tinubu to approve 150,000 Naira, says lawmakers willing to make sacrifices. Mm. So there are, there are very interesting things there uh, to find out. You might want to read that story on, I think, page 5 of the Vanguard newspaper. Uh, one of the governors is saying he's not party to uh, the governors who are saying that they are not going to pay the minimum wage. He's just waiting for the federal government to make a pronouncement. And uh, that is really, uh, really commendable. That is Dr. Um, uh, governor Idris, uh, who has uh, detached himself 
from unwilling governors. So he is able to pay or he's willing to pay, um, maybe not necessarily able to pay, but willing to pay and possibly will find ways around that and make sure that he pays. That he was a union leader, he fought for the people and he's not going to abandon them now in the time of need. Those are his words. And uh, we do hope that other governors will look into it and see how they can create wealth to be able to meet the demands of paying salaries and not go ahead and retrench because some, some of them might just, uh, in a bit to show that they really couldn't afford the wage bill, just go and indiscriminately, I might add, uh, sack a lot of people and they're not going to just retire them with benefits. They're going to retrench them, or they're going to sack them uh, to make sure that they don't pay the corresponding um, allowances that they are supposed to pay to retirees and all that. So we hope this never gets to happen. But before the labor union and organized private sector, federal government and all the stakeholders began talking, a state like a Doe state accepted that they were going to or, or said that they were going to pay 70%, 70,000 Naira as minimum wage when the federal government was still uh, still talking about 35 or something thousand they were already at 70. Cross River State I think was at 40,000 Naira even though Cross River State is basically a civil service state and not a business or commercial state as some other states. They might have a few uh, natural resources that are not even being uh, making so much money for them. Uh, they might have other things that are going for them but they accepted to pay 40,000 Naira. They, they said they were going to pay 40,000 Naira before the agitation of the labor and all that. So if states are thinking uh, ahead and thinking about how to improve the lot of their, their workers and some other governors are saying we cannot pay, we will not pay. Some are saying we will not pay, some are saying we cannot pay and others who may not be as rich as others are saying that hey you know what whatever the government said the federal government says we're going to find a way around it and we're going to pay this money but we do hope that there's going to be a middle ground a senator has suggested 150,000 naira i think when it gets there the labor uh, should do the needful and say okay we give you this time let us see what we can do, we can do with this and in the next five years maybe there's going to be a review as the president promised that whatever is going to be pronounced may be for five years or less. So let's see what is going to happen. Let's not have strikes every day and let's not have the federal government or the labor going on strike any day at all again. Uh, we also have on the top uh, of that uh, front page of the Vanguard, on page nine, you will find Naira depreciation makes Lagos Abuja cheapest global cities for expatriates. Okay, at least someone is seeing an advantage in the fall of our Naira. The expatriates are coming to a place like Lagos and Abuja, and then they're finding it so cheap to be here because of uh, the uh, depreciation of the Naira. Um, cholera outbreak, federal government may declare emergency. Uh, that's according to NCDC DG. Uh, some parents prevent children from school. Yeah, I mean, it's quite scary that your child might be going to school and will take up this thing that you don't know uh, the way around it. And then we have a Doguba, PDP expels Shaibu Obi, cites anti-party activities. I think we're being joined by my guest for this morning. Uh, Mr. Nick Agule, public affairs analyst, has just joined us. Uh, sorry that um, uh, it has to be the way it is right now, but we thank you that you were able to join us. Good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning, uh, and uh, good morning to Abuja as well. Mm. I see you are in Abuja, right? Yes, absolutely. Mm. You know my background now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had I had a whisper in the wind that you may be traveling to Abuja soon from Benway. So that's why I guessed. Uh, okay. okay. So, so now um, I think... Uh, the 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 what is making headlines everywhere is the rivers crisis daily independent leads with fubara orders probe of local government swears in ketika committee chairman uh, we're talking about rivers local government uh, tenor crisis so i would like to hear your comments uh, some chairmen are saying uh, that only democratically elected individuals can be in office so they 
they have no need to leave and that the um, factional House of Assembly also elongated their tenure. Uh, but the other party is saying that the constitution is the ground norm and cannot be tinkered with just because of some personal aggrandizements. And so it is clearly spelled that three years is three years and they need to leave and a caretaker committee has already been inaugurated. So let's, let's hear your thoughts on what's happening in River State. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for this. Uh, what is happening in River State, as it is happening in the majority of states across the nation, is very unfortunate. Because the local governments are the governments that are closest to the people. Nigeria's three tier of governments have the federal government sitting in Abuja. They don't know what's happening in villages across the country. <coughs> and then we have the state government headquartered in uh, 36 states in Nigeria, 36 uh, towns and cities in Nigeria. They don't really know uh, what's happening because there are some states where it will take you uh, a long distance to travel from the furthermost local government to the state capital. So the local government system is actually meant to be the government that is with the people, understands what the people are going through, and provide solutions for that. So just think about a Nigeria with 774 development centers, because that is the number of local governments that we have in this country. If development is happening at 774 spots in Nigeria today as we speak, we're going to have a better country. We're going to have governance devolve to the people. People will see government in action. But this is not happening. And it's not happening because there are a couple of, uh, you know, problems. The first problem is actually the constitution itself, the constitution that you quote. Um, I don't really see where the constitution has specified the tenure of local government councils to be three years. I, I, I think if anybody sees that in the constitution, they should be able to put forward that. Because I know that the local government system is provided for in part two, Chapter 7 of the Constitution. And it only talks about the local government system uh, being run by democratically elected councils. The Constitution actually says democratic, democratically elected councils to run the local government system is guaranteed. Uh, there's no provision for transition uh, councils in, in the Constitution for local government. But the constitution is said now becomes ambiguous because it invests the powers to make laws for the allocation of revenue and all that in the National Assembly. And at the same time, uh, invest the same powers in the state houses of assembly. And then goes ahead to create a local government joint account, which the governors have seized, where allocations made for local government are pulled together. The governors see that kind of tranche of money, and it, it becomes the incentive for them not to allow the local government system to work. So on a general level, this is what is happening. It's not just in River State. I think uh, there are a majority of states, more than 20 of them as we speak today, who do not have democratically elected councils in their local government. And this is not right. You know, and I believe is the reason why President Chinebu is trying to uh, force the hands of the states with the local government autonomy bill that he has placed before the National Assembly. But we have done this before. And then it goes to the state houses of assembly who are under the influence of the governors and they throw out the stance. So there is a big issue for local government administration in Nigeria. And River State is only just an example of what has been happening. So if we now go back to River State, of course, um, you have described the scenario accurately. Uh, the local government uh, councils have spent three years, meaning they spent two years under former Governor Wike, and now they have spent one year under Governor Fubara. And uh, if uh, Governor Fubara and uh, his godfather were still together, of course, I don't think we'll be hearing about these issues that are coming up in the local government system in River State. 
But because uh, that marriage has broken down, possibly irretrievably, Governor Fubara is now trying to be a man, standing as a man of his own, and he's trying to take control of the local government. And um, we have all the legal issues there of uh, the State House of Assembly, the, 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 the Martins, uh, Amefoye led the uh, State House of Assembly, making a law extending the law says if there is no election, then the, the tenure of the local government uh, is extended by six months. But the question arises whether they are even members of the State House of Assembly at all. Mm. So those are the kind of legal jigsaw that we have. And now Governor Fubara has taken over the situation. Uh, he declared that uh, the local government uh, council's tenure ended on the 18th. And then he appointed, uh, he asked the, the director general of uh, the administration to take over. But yesterday, uh, the two-man or three-man House of Assembly sitting in government house under his influence uh, went ahead and screened the uh, uh, local government um, transition uh, administrators and the uh, governor Fubara swore them into office immediately. So that's the kind of situation we have now in Rivers. And I say it is not healthy at all for the people of Rivers State. Just it's like not it's not healthy at it's all for the people of all the states where democratically elected local councils are not installed. But even if there is elections conducted, you hardly see a situation where if the PDP is in power and the local government council goes to the APC or vice versa, which is terrible. And again, because of the fact that the state governments are using their state electoral commissions to do this kind of 100% uh, uh, Local, local government election results in favor of the parties upon which they, 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 are, they are running the states. The federal government is trying to see if they can even take the electoral powers of the state electoral commissions to, to, to the National Electoral Commission, INEC, Independent National Electoral Commission. There's so much problems happening in Nigeria. In whichever way we turn, we yeah. have leaders who are just there to disrupt the system. Yeah, but leaders Nick, who yeah, yeah, really you're just talking about uh, destroying the system, and it just uh, triggered something. Should, is it not a shame that in this day and age, we will be talking about a governor and a godfather, and we know the kind of things that a godfather, uh, because of this godfather, uh, is happening, the things that are happening in uh, River State because of a godfather, and we're not doing anything about it. Not only is he a godfather that is known, he is still in government and nobody seems to be talking about um, his place in all this and what should be done to him. Because if we shouldn't have a godfather and we find somebody bringing uh, turmoil into a state, what shouldn't there be something done to the person, you know, that is legal enough to make sure that this person stops causing problems? Because we have a sitting governor, whether he makes mistakes or not. And then we know somebody else who's throwing stones into a government and we're saying nothing about it. Is it not a shame? It, it, it is a terrible situation that we are in in Nigeria. Uh, and I agree with you, it's a shameful situation that in the 21st century, where we're in the information age and uh, the whole world is seeing what is happening at every detail level, anywhere, uh, anywhere in the world, that the world is watching us in Nigeria go through this kind of uh, symbolic uh, uh, systems. You know, uh, we are seeing leaders whose duty, uh, as they show on the constitution and the various uh, uh, books of their faith, either by the Bible or the Quran, to defend the constitution and uh, provide good governance for the people, they are running roughshod on the same constitution and uh, nothing is happening. But, you know, uh, uh, we, have discussed, we have discussed this thing uh, several times. You know, the, the system of government, especially a democracy that we're running, must have the people on board. You know, the, the, the people who are the fourth arm of government, as, as I like to call, call us, must be participating in the democracy. If you go to those nations where democracy is thriving, democracy is... Uh, is delivering dividends. Like the UK, they have their election in about two weeks. On July the 4th, they are going to, to, to run an election. And you will see the people fully engaged. 
and people are not only engaged at the electoral stage people are also engaged hand in hand with the leaders you know through the whole tenure of uh, office but in nigeria perhaps for various reasons we are yet to get the people come on board you know we are yet to get the people become fully involved engage in the governance process where like you rightly said the questions we need to be asked to say why should you know a state like river state you know a, a state that given its uh area resources and the kind of monies that they get both on the foundation account and internally generated revenue should be become should should have become a mini dubai by now the river state the likes of river state you know um uh, um by Esa state you know are quite bomb this states with a lot of oil resources with money they should be we need to buy us now if they were being wrong well they are not being wrong well and we have a situation we we'll talk about a godfather you know who is running over a governor and the people are sitting there looking at this situation and doing nothing about it or if they even have to do something is to gather themselves and, and be standing in support of one of the protagonists in the whole thing so Nigerians, you know, I, I believe this message is a difficult one to preach, but we have to continue preaching this message. That this our democracy will not deliver the kind of dividends we are hoping for. Unless we become engaged, unless we begin to say no to our political leaders, unless the political leaders begin to fear for their lives when they see us, you know, until we get to that point, I don't think anything is going to happen good because they are not going to just let go. Do you think the proposal of APC in River State is what uh, the way to go? APC demands a state of emergency in rivers. That's what they're saying. Do you think uh, they are right? Well, uh, APC is demanding uh, a state of emergency in rivers because the governor is uh, in a different party than theirs. The governor is a PDP governor. Uh, if the governor was an APC governor, I believe that that same APC will not be demanding for a state of emergency. Uh, I think uh, they are playing politics there because they are, uh, like I said, I have not taken account, but I believe that there are uh, over 20 states in Nigeria that don't have elected local government uh, councils as we speak today. So if the APC in River State is seeking for declaration of state of emergency they should be seeking for that declaration in apc states like benway where i know for sure that there are no elected uh, council chairman so uh, that that is simple politics that they are playing and i don't think uh, what is happening in river demands a declaration of state of emergency okay uh, we move to vanguard newspaper minimum wage why governors others are foot dragging and we have some writers there uh, may retrench workers need bailout to pay. Uh, Idris detaches itself from uh, unwilling governors at which Labour federal government stand. Uh, no agreement but alignment of interest according to organized uh, private sector and so on. Uh, so many other uh, things including the fact that uh, uh, Senator Wadada has begged Tinubu to approve 150,000 Naira says lawmakers willing to make sacrifices. We're still here uh, talking about the minimum wage when the the labor went on strike and it involved everything including uh, aviation industry the the government seemed to be very active and asking and having meetings almost every day now the labor has said that they are not going to go on strike they are going to wait for the federal government it seems as if everything has gone back to normal nothing is being said because we've not heard much about uh, what the minimum wage is going to be. We even expected that on Democracy Day the president was going to say something definite. He didn't. He just said that they had already discussed with a, a mind full of love with the NLC, which now came out to say we have not heard anything apart from what was um, agreed upon on Friday preceding that day, which was 250,000 from Labour and 65,000 from uh, the federal government. So I don't know. What, what do you think? Labor and federal government fight. It's still there, and we've not heard anything about the minimum wage. Yes, it's, uh, the minimum wage uh, situation is really unfortunate. What I say is unfortunate is that, let's not forget that the last minimum wage negotiation, which agreed 30,000 Naira, 
as many know in Nigeria, which I think was like five years ago. There are states in Nigeria, as we speak today, that did not even implement that minimum wage. You know, that minimum wage was uh, a, a jump from 18,000 to 30,000. State governments in Nigeria have not even implemented that uh, minimum wage. A, a good number of them. You know, not to talk about the private sector. Perhaps you can only be talking about organized private sector, probably meeting up with that minimum wage. But the rest of the private sector, all the people you see, the security you see, you know, those who are working in shops, in restaurants, and all of that. All of those kind of people working in tailoring outfits, working in fashion houses here and there. They, 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 their employer decide on what to pay them. Some of them have been paid as low as 10000 naira, 20000 and things like that. So when we are now discussing the minimum wage thing, for me, I actually just say, at the end of the day, what is going to happen? We have spent all the time and even spent so much money to put a tripartite committee together to discuss a minimum wage that we know that uh, some states and local governments won't pay and the the informal sector, the informal private sector won't pay. So uh, at the end, of what benefit, of what use? Because the minimum wage should be a minimum wage. Mm -hmm. If the government were serious, they should have known that once you agree a minimum wage, it becomes the law. It then means that there, sh there should be no employer of labor who should pay less than that, regardless of what they are doing. Even if it is your house help, you should pay them because they are working for you. You know, your babysitter, you must pay them that minimum wage. That's what obtains elsewhere. You know, and if uh, an employer is not paying the minimum wage, then the, the worker can go to the government and report the employer and say, look, I'm babysitting for this uh, uh, for this person, for this family, and they're not paying me the minimum wage. And the government takes uh, criminal proceedings on, on such a defaulting employer. Nothing of such is happening in Nigeria. So at the end, we just make no discord talk, and at the end, we decide on the minimum wage, 100000 150000 even as the senator is saying. Yeah, nobody will base it. So for, for what benefit? That is one side. On the other side, of course, uh, the federal government will normally pay the minimum wage, just as some states. And if they are to pay the minimum wage, they have an issue. And the issue is rare. Because Nigeria is a non-productive economy. We are suffering from production. We don't have production. You know, because if you look at uh, agriculture, look at manufacturing, look at all of these kind of areas, there is not much happening because, of course, you have how much can you produce with 3,000 megawatts of electricity? Mm -hmm. So, if the supply of goods and services is not increasing and you now increase wages, there's only one result. That result is there will not be too much money chasing the same quantity of goods, and that's going to be inflation. And for me, for the benefit of our viewers, if I want to break that down into a layman's language, I would say. Assuming there are 1,000 yams in the market today, and people have uh, 10,000 naira, it means one yam is 10 naira in that market. Mm -hmm. Assuming you now increase that man's money from 10 naira to 100 naira, and there are still only 1,000 yams in the market, you will now discover that therefore that the, the, the cost of yam will now go up because there's, no, there's more money now. And yet the yams have remained 1,000 in number. That's what happened. That's where inflation will come in. And uh, where can Nigeria not deal with this inflation? Because already as we speak today, inflation is is uh, 30, 30 something percent. I think it's 33 percent or there about. If I mm. recall accurately, the last MBS uh, results. So the government needs to be more creative. This minimum wage thing shouldn't be just be about increasing salary, which increases money supply without commensurate increase in output which is inflationary government should start looking at non-cash payment for instance if government provides subsidized transportation that becomes no cash payment if government provides subsidized housing it's a non-cash payment if government subsidizes education subsidizes health care it becomes non-cash payment because when workers take this salary these are the things they spend money on mm. you know so if they are spending money on food, and government has a way of uh, uh, you know subsidizing food for workers, the government is actually paying workers money but no cash. 
So they can handle the inflationary aspect of it. And I don't think those conversations are happening. And this okay. minimum wage thing is just going to kill the economy more with inflation, the way I see it. Okay, well, uh, there are other headlines, but this is a good way to drop it. Nick Agule, we thank you so much for your time this morning. And we're always glad to have you. Uh, thank you very much and good morning. Yeah. Uh, nice thing. You too. Okay, we've been talking with Nick Agule, public affairs analyst. He joined us to review the papers this morning. Uh, we'll take a very short break and return with our first hot topic. Stay with us.